Hello and welcome to Cooking for the Amavet. I am your host Wesley Foreman and today I am going to be making the classic French dish cassoulet with a few minor adjustments. So let's get started. So step one in making cass cassoulet is you have to soak your beans. Four hours minimum overnight is best. <clears throat> I began soaking these beans the night before I began filming this video. Now you notice that there are a few beans that are floating to the surface. Uh, my grandmother always said that these are the beans oh, you don't want, that there was something wrong with them and that's why they were floating. As a joke, she used to call them the witch beans because of the way the uh, Puritans believed that the reason they would dunk the uh, alleged witches was that if they floated to the surface, water the water was rejecting them. But if they sank and drowned, they weren't witches. And so they got a decent Christian burial. So anyway, these are going to go in the refrigerator overnight. And I will begin using them when I make the rest of my cassoulet tomorrow. Then, before you proceed any further, we're going to insert our crock pot liner to make the cleanup much, much easier when this is over. Then you pour in our navy beans, which have been soaking overnight. Now we're going to add our carrots. find the right bay leaf here. What a nice big bay leaf if you like them big. Which I yeah, okay, that's, uh, All right, that one right there should be good. Put that there. And this is going to seem like a lot, I know. We're going to add six cloves. You heard me right. Six cloves of minced garlic. Let's get that in there. Now we're going to cook about four ounces of bacon on a medium heat until it's nice and golden. We'll know that the pan has reached the correct temperature when the little drops of water are sprinkled on the pan have all boiled or evaporated away. <clears throat> so let's get everything else ready while we're waiting for that. Okay, our pan should be about ready now. So we're going to add our bacon. You can also use pancetta, but if you can't find pancetta, bacon will work just as well. And we just want to get it nice and golden. We don't want to make it crispy. Courage of our conviction. We can flip it. Yay, I did it. Julia would be proud. This is one of my non-stick pans. I, this is one of my favorite pans. Everyone's got a favorite pan. And if you're going to flip something, like Julia said, you have to have the courage of your convictions. I am so happy and proud of myself. Proud of, not prideful. There's a difference, I think. This is also very nonstick. I got this one from Amazon. I think it's the Rachel Ray collection. This is also the pan I use when I make omelets. Oh, I dropped a piece, but don't worry. Oh. 
I'm not going to do it, but for those of you at home, if something falls, pick it up real quick. Five second rule. And if you're alone in the kitchen, as Julia said, who's to see? Okay, we're just about ready to add the onion. This is going to be so good. It smells fantastic already, but then of course it would because it is bacon. So let's skip ahead. Now we're going to add our large onion that's been nice, nicely chopped. And we're going to stir this until the onion has gone tender. Now, if the uh, oil gets absorbed too quickly or evaporates from your pan, because that will happen, Another thing you can do is uh, when you're cooking bacon normally, you save the bacon grease. And you can add that if you want to, which I'm going to do. But you know, not just with the liver, always save the, gre uh, the bacon grease. Oops. That onion just made it to the stove, not the floor, so it's okay, because I always clean my stove. Okay, and the onions are cooking really well, actually. Now let's skip ahead. Now, we're going to add two tablespoons of tomato paste and one cup of beef broth. Which we are going to bring this mixture to a nice simmer as we stir this in and get it all nice and blended. Okay, while we're waiting for it to simmer, I'm going to clean up a little bit of spillage I have right here next to the side. Try to keep everything clean as I go. And it's starting to simmer already. It's looking good, smelling good. We've got our onions, we've got our bacon, we've got our tomato paste and beef broth. A friend of mine, uh, he, he refers to cassoulet as uh, French pork and beans. I suppose in a way it is, but there's just so much more to it than that, as you're going to see. As we get further along with this recipe. So let's skip ahead to when the uh, our mixture, our uh, onions, bacon, and uh, tomato paste and beef broth are at a full simmer. Be right back. Now, as we're waiting for our full simmer, what we're going to do is we're going to take our pork. Now, normally, uh, cassoulet is made with lamb, but if you're unable to find it at your local grocery store, or it you can find it and it's just too expensive 
for your budget, you can also substitute pork. The same goes with another ingredient. Uh, this is andouille sausage. Normally you'd use kielbasa, but you can really use any garlic based sausage that you have available. I like to use this andouille. It's a good sausage. And because the day I went to the store, they were out of kielbasa. And last but not least, if you can get it, you uh, the recipe calls for duck. But this also says that a good alternative is bone-in, skin-on chicken thighs, which is what we'll be using today. Okay. Now, I'm hoping this is going to work out because you don't want to overcrowd your meat or it's not going to cook properly. But we'll find out soon if this is going to be too much. Now, we're going to add the contents of our skillet. Have your scraper ready. So you can get all of that flavor in there. Now we're going to add our remaining three cups of our beef broth. We're going to start off with one half teaspoon of salt. If we need more, we can add it later. But as I've said many times, you never want to add too much salt at the beginning because you cannot take it out if it turns out to be too much, but you can always add more. And one quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Same with the pepper. You don't want to start out with too much because you can always add more later, but you can't subtract. Now we are going to cover this, plug in our slow cooker, sorry about my arm, and we are going to set this to cook on low for between 8 to 10 hours. It takes a long time, but I, oh, it came undone, came unplugged. Got to fix that and start the whole thing over. on low for eight to ten hours. I know that sounds like a lot but it's gonna be worth it I think. Uh, so I will see you in eight. If it's not done yet you need to cook for, like I said eight to ten hours or until the beans are nice and tender so and the meat is fully cooked. So I will see you in eight hours and if that doesn't work we'll uh, let it cook a little bit longer. See you soon. Okay it's just been a little over eight hours now so watch out for the steam. I'm going to take a little taste of the beans, at least, to see if they've gotten tender enough. So, excuse me a second. Hmm. Yep, and they are nice and tender. So now we go on to the next step. We're going to put this on warm. Going to adjust the temperature, and we're going. To go, excuse me. We're going to go on to the next step. And the next step is we are going to toast over medium heat some plain breadcrumbs. I'm using Progresso. So as soon as the pot uh, pan, sorry, not pot pan, is ready, we can move on to the next step. Uh, and as you see again, I am using the little drops of water. Once they've been boiled away by the heat, I'll know that everything, it's reached the correct temperature. And we can start toasting. Okay, here we 
everything's ready, so I'm going to take one cup, more or less, of plain progressive breadcrumbs, and we're going to, over medium heat until it's uh, uh, slightly toasted, and again, you must have the courage of your convictions, so you can flip it and not have it go flying everywhere. And I'm not going to sit deny the fact that sometimes it also takes a little bit of luck. Courage and luck. Okay. Not yet. Don't worry, my hands are clean. It is starting to get a little toasted. And as far as the tossing goes, practice makes perfect. So let's just jump ahead to when it's nice and toasty. Okay, it's starting to look toasty enough for me, so yeah. turn off our heat and we're going to move on to our next step, which is I am going to transfer the chicken breasts to a plate. chicken has gotten so tender that... No, I'm sorry, I thought that was a piece of chicken. That's actually some of the pork. So, let's move on to the next step, which is to cover our chicken in foil until we're ready to use it. there. Get our breadcrumbs into position. Because our next step after that is to add it to our cassoulet. And stir that in nice and good. And we keep stirring until we find our bay leaf if possible. But if we can't find it, don't worry, it'll turn up eventually. Oh, here we go. I mean, ooh, very hot. I'm going to take that out. As we use it for flavor, but no one actually eats the bay leaf. I don't think you're... Definitely no, you're not supposed to. So, we just let this cool down a bit. Well, we set up our uh, garlic bread that I'm going to serve with the cassoulet. Okay, now that everything is ready, okay, give this another good stir. Let me put the cassoulet. And then we top it off with one of our chicken thighs. And there you have it, French cassoulet. And now, let's go eat. And this is the part I like the best. Okay. Mmm. Oh, that's good. I need to wait a little bit longer before I eat the chicken part. Because 
it's still rather hot. So I'll set that aside for now. Just have some of this others. Here we have some of the beans and a piece of the sausage. Ooh. Mmm. That's good. Now we have part of the carrot. Mm. Oh, that is good. So very good. Oh. So <clears throat> let's jump ahead until it's uh, safe to eat the chicken part without burning my tongue. Okay, now for some chicken. Mmm. Very tender. Almost melts like butter. Mmm. This is good. So, so good. I found one of my new favorite foods, cassoulet. So anyway, sorry about that. Uh, that's my episode for today. I hope you get to enjoy it and try making this yourself. Please remember to comment down below, like if you enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe, and always remember, until next time, eat and enjoy.